Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is the last day of loose powder week and we're going to be talking about two separate powders. So we're going to be talking about the Clay de Peau loose powder and we're also going to be talking about the original La Mer powder, which I know is a little bit odd, but a few of you actually commented that you wanted to see the La Mer powder. And so I responded, I have the old powder. I have a lot of it left, so I haven't bothered getting the new one. I'm sorry I won't be reviewing the new one. And a lot of you responded, no, I want to see the original powder. So I thought, okay, I have it. I can talk about it. So I've talked about the Clay de Peau powder uh, a lot over the past, I want to say, couple months at this point. And this has become my favorite setting powder. So I like to use the La Mer as a finishing powder. So I thought I would use both. So since I have experience with both of these powders, this video is gonna be a review on both of these powders. So again, this is the original La Mer powder. This is a powder that you can't get anymore, but a bunch of you requested that I talk about it anyway. So we are. So if you're interested in either of these powders, then just keep on watching. All right, so I have uh, put on the Clay de Peau, the foundation. I've also put down the Clay de Peau, the concealer. That's all I have on my face. We are getting a bit of a late start today. It's about noon. And I thought, you know what, that's okay because this is gonna be more of a review of these powders. So I don't feel like we're gonna to have to do so much of a wear test, but I will come back uh, towards like dinner time to give you at least like a five hour uh, check-in, review, final thoughts kind of a thing. So Clay de Poil I like to use as setting, the La Mer I like to use as finishing. So we'll talk about this later once I get makeup on my face and we wanna go in with some finishing powder. But for now, let's talk about the Clay de Peau uh, Loose Translucent Powder. I believe they only have one shade. So I believe I purchased this off of the Nordstrom site, if not Nordstrom Bergdorf. Anyway, I always link to all my products down below in the description box, so don't forget to check that out. Um, it's a, I had to check, cause it's been a while, it's $105. There is uh, almost an ounce in here, let's see, 0.91 ounces, um, and this is refillable. I believe you can buy just the powder and put it into this whole container. So here is the obnoxiously large <laughs> container that the powder comes in. It's the Clay de Peau, uh, like navy blue, and this is a screw-off top. And inside, you will find the most generous powder puff ever created. It's really awesome. It's really, really plush. I love it so much, I haven't even used it yet because I just don't want to ruin it. But anyway, it sits on this cover. So there's another cover that you screw off. And inside is the powder. Uh, it comes with this separate like mesh insert and you just sort of plop that on top of the powder and it basically keeps it sifted. So like I had mentioned before, this is a powder that I've been using for quite some time and I've talked about it in other videos. I think I may have even talked about it in last month's favorites. And uh, someone commented that because it has like this slight kind of pinky hue to it, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has just a hint of pink to it that this person, I can't remember who it was, but someone commented and they said that they thought that the powder kind of gave them an ashy uh, kind of look to their skin. So this is definitely something to be aware of if you can't use um, like a powder with like any hint of any kind of pink to it, then this may not work for you. But this isn't something that I necessarily see show up on my skin tone. So anyway, once I put it on, you guys will see what I'm talking about. There is a slight Clay de Peau rose scent to the powder. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, this may also not be for you. It's very present, you know, when you put your nose up to it, it's very present when you put it on your face, but it dissipates, I wanna say, after probably like 10, 15 minutes, I don't feel like I smell it anymore. So why don't we go ahead and dig in and put this on as setting powder. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Chikahoto Z1 brush and I'm just gonna dip in lightly here, about that much on the brush. I'm gonna start by just pressing it around my eye area, and I'll apply it just to this half of my face so we can kind of compare. Okay, so here is a light layer of the Clay de Peau powder. You can see that it has a mattifying effect. There are no sparkles, no micro sparkles, no micro glitters, nothing in this powder. It is just a straight up uh, matte powder. But what I like about it, much like the Chanel powder, it's not um, it's not like a flat matte finish. It is a very kind of natural matte finish. And I feel like I'm still left with a very kind of natural sheen to my skin, which is really, really nice. I don't feel like I look dry at all. What I also love about this powder is that I feel like it does a really great job kind of blurring out the 
uh, fine lines I have under my eyes and also the larger pores that I have next to my uh, nose over here on my cheek. So I'm going to zoom in and hopefully you guys can see the blurring effect underneath my eyes and right here. And it also just gives um, a nice kind of like veiled effect to the rest of my skin. I feel like my skin kind of has like an aura after I put this powder on. It's really, really beautiful. So let me go ahead and apply it to the rest of my face and I'll be right back. So here it is all over my face. I feel like this powder is a very good example for a powder that maybe very, ever so slightly um, lightens up my foundation a little bit. So it's a translucent powder, but it's not completely invisible. It's definitely not um, transparent in any way. But this is a good example of a powder I feel like that brightens my complexion, where I felt like yesterday's Armani powder, where I feel like it lightened up my complexion, but all it did was just kind of make me look more pale and maybe even a little bit ashy. But this I feel like really kind of like brightens up my complexion. And I wonder if it's because there is just the slightest I mean slight like you have to come up pretty close to me to see this kind of like really really subtle kind of pearly sheen to this powder. So there's the Clé de Peau as setting powder. What I'll do is put on the rest of my makeup off camera and we'll come back and we'll use the original La Mer powder as finishing powder. Hey guys, I'm back. I just uh, finished up my face and I'm ready to put some finishing powder on. So we've got the original La Mer powder here and of course I've got my Sonia G Face One brush, my favorite uh, finishing brush. And let's go ahead and just open this up. This powder has a little bit of a peachy tint to it. There's also a little bit of sparkle in there. I have it in the color uh, translucent. I don't even remember at this point if they had, or, or how many colors they had. I think they had a few, maybe three. Anyway, I'm gonna knock some into the lid. I'm just left with a little bit and I'm gonna pounce that over my uh, cheek area. And do the same to my forehead. And I'm only doing half of my face so you can see the difference. So I picked up this brush a while ago. I think, I think this is a Hakuhoto brush. I'm not sure, but it is basically like a small buffing brush. Here it is next to the Sonia G. And I was just thinking that maybe this could be good for the under eye area. So I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, it's a little bit firmer than the face one brush. Obviously the bristles are shorter, but hopefully it won't move uh, too much of the product around underneath since I have setting powder down. So I think this is okay for finishing powder. I'm not sure I would use a brush like this for setting powder. And I'm gonna stamp that underneath. I'm also going to use this around my nose. So there, we have the finishing powder on this half of my face. Nothing on that side. We'll do some close-ups here. I think it does a nice job softening up the look on my cheek here. Here's a little comparison without and with. And the sheen that the La Mer powder gives is so, so beautiful. It's really pearly. It has just a few bit of those sparkles less than the Armani for sure, less than the Sisley, so it's just a little bit, there's just a hint of it. So I don't know if any of you guys have the new, la, newer La Mer powder. I've watched Puffin's video on it, she does a comparison, she likes the original more, but she does like the new one. So I don't know, let me know what you think if you have both, um, if you've compared the two, your thoughts on it. I'm just wondering if I should just bite the bullet and get the new one. So let me go ahead and finish up the rest of my face. I'm gonna buff it in on this side. Okay, so there it is all over my face. So let me go about my day and I will be back uh, at around dinner time and kind of give you a look after I've had this on for about five, six hours at that point. And I will see you then. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm back. It is five o'clock in the afternoon. So like I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, I got a late start today, but because I'm kind of doing a review and this is not a first impressions, I didn't think we need to do a full day wear test. So we've had this on for about five hours. And so I just wanted to show you how these powders have performed. So like I've mentioned a gazillion times, the Clé de Peau loose powder is one of my favorites. It's absolutely amazing. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to get my mirror in here. And it just sets down my makeup beautifully, like nothing has shifted, nothing looks weird, my foundation hasn't like crumbled apart, uh, there's no um, oily shine coming through, and then the La Mer powder as a finishing powder is just beautiful. 
it's just beautiful. It just gives my skin like the most pearly sheen. Um, the little, little micro glitters in there are so fine and so few that it really, you only see it like every so often on your skin when you kind of like catch the light. I'm going to pull you guys in close and we'll do close inspection here. My forehead area and the eye area. I don't, I think it's done a nice job blurring. I don't think it has emphasized my lines. It hasn't emphasized my pores. It still looks nice around my nostrils where a lot of things start to disintegrate. Neither of these powders do. And you can see the finish on my cheek, I think looks really, really beautiful. It's almost like a satin finish. And then no weird caking up on my chin area. So I absolutely love these powders. I think eventually, because I was just trying to think back, like how long have I had this original La Mer powder? It's been a while. So I think I'm gonna have to kind of either really work hard <laughs> to get through it, or I think I just need to like kind of suck it up and get the new powder. And when I do, I'll probably do another uh, review of that particular powder. And so today is the last day of loose powder week. So we are wrapping it up with these two powders. So I am gonna be doing one video of loose powder week kind of wrapping everything up to kind of talk about all the powders that I've talked about all the powders that I've talked about this past month the brushes that I use just everything just to kind of give you the pros the cons if I had to buy one powder which would it be if I was looking for this or if I was looking for this so definitely stay tuned for that but we're gonna have one nice wrap-up video for loose powder week coming up soon. So if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. I don't have a schedule, so I think that notification bell is super important if you want to stay on top of my videos. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video.